Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In Surah Balad, verses 1 to 4, Allah says, La uqsimu bihaz al-Balad wa anta hillum bihaz al-Balad wa walidin wa ma walad laqad halakna al-insana fi kabad. And the translation of these verses is, I swear by the city, Mecca, and you are an inhabitant of this city. And I swear by the father and that which was born of him, we have certainly created man in hardship. Now, I mentioned a very important point in the previous episode. Many of us deliberately choose to only focus on the bad things that have happened to us in our lives because we like to live in the victim mentality. We like others to feel sorry for us and we like to feel sorry for ourselves. And this can lead to a dangerous cycle. We remind ourselves of our difficult times in the past. People feel sorry for us, which in turn makes us feel sorry for ourselves. And then we start thinking of more bad things that happened to us in the past. So it becomes a vicious cycle and we end up living in victim mentality forever. At that moment, when someone tells us that we need to struggle and fight because Allah has made us strong, we get upset and angry. But the interesting thing is that Allah is making it clear in these verses that insan was created to struggle and face hardship. That was the whole point. Allah did not make his best creation so weak that it just sits and feels sorry for itself. On the contrary, insan was created to fight all his life. So in these verses, Allah takes an oath by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is an inhabitant of the city, Mecca. And then Allah takes an oath by the father and son that insan was created in hardship. But what is the link between these oaths and the statement insan was created in hardship? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spent 12 years in Mecca, constantly struggling in his attempt to save his people from Jahannam. The same people who knew him since he was a child, who knew him to be honest and trustworthy, denied him to be a messenger and constantly insulted him, while he worked day and night to give the message with patience and love. At one point, he was performing his prayers in front of the Kaaba something that Abu Jahl hated to see. So Abu Jahl and his friends brought the intestines of a camel that had been recently slaughtered and placed it on the back of the Prophet when he was down in Sajda, so that he was completely helpless. At that moment, the Messenger of God was down on the ground, stuck, unable to get up, while he could hear everyone around him laughing. He remained in that position for a few minutes until his daughter was informed and she came running to help him. Yet, despite all of this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, continued to overlook the behavior of his people, giving them the message with love and sabr. Very similar to the way that a father spends his entire life trying to guide his child, protecting him from harm. Even when the child is on the wrong path, the father never stops in his attempt to guide his child. He spends his entire life trying to protect and save his child from harm. So now you can understand the relationship between both the oaths. Taking an oath on the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was an inhabitant in Mecca, and taking an oath between a father and a son. So overall, in these verses, the struggle of the Prophet for his people is being compared to the lifelong struggle of a father towards his child. And then Allah says, insan was created to struggle. So me and you were created to work day and night in understanding the message, implementing the message and spreading the message. We have to work day and night in trying to help attract as many people as we can to Islam and save as many people as we can, including ourselves, from Jahannam, much like the Prophet did for his people, much like a father does for his child. It's a lifelong struggle. And it's a struggle which involves first having love in our hearts for mankind in the same way that the Prophet had love in his heart for his people, in the same way that a father has love in his heart for a child. Instead of judging people, instead of getting annoyed and irritated by the response that we get from people, we have to show genuine love and sabr. Keep trying to pull them towards Islam. 
And most importantly, because it's a struggle, there will be many times when we will fall. But the message being given to us is get back up again. There is a mission for which you and I have been created. Don't underestimate your strength. You have the ability of spreading Islam while at the same time dealing with all your personal tests and trials. That is why you are the best of Allah's creations. So why waste yourself by living in the victim mentality? Assalamu alaikum.